Smells are weird. They sneak into the darkness of our nostrils, triggering instant, often profound reactions. A mere whiff can resurrect a memory deeply buried, complete with all the surroundings feelings. In my case, usually regret and shame. This happens because the scent information have a high-speed connection straight to the amygdala and hippocampus, brain areas critical for processing emotions, memories and, what's important, decision-making. This direct line means scents can subtly influence our behavior without us catching a whiff of something being off. Scent influence is deep, unconscious, can trigger complex behaviors, but understanding it could let us harness this power for our own good. What do you say about casually sniffing things to boost your memory by a whooping 226%? But before diving into memory improvements, let's discuss how sneaky the small influence can be. And from the few powerful fundamental feelings, anger can be an excellent example of the deep, primal control sense have over us. To set the stage for the study we are about to dive into, it's crucial to understand that the mere act of sniffing can significantly impact our biological responses. And tears are a powerful illustration of that. Citing one study, human female tears contain a perceptually odorless chemical signal that when sniffed lowers testosterone in human males. A new study, published last year, gave an interesting example of how this testosterone leak is impacting behavior. To begin with, researchers harvested emotional tears samples from six women and presented those for sniffing reasons to the experimental male-only group. The control group, on the other hand, sniffed plain saline. After the initial exposure, both groups, still sniffing, played a really annoying game, but with a really catchy title of Point Subtraction Aggression Paradigm. Rules for the game are simple, yet intriguing. A participant is anonymously paired with an opponent and stationed in separate rooms, each equipped with a computer to navigate the game. The interface includes three buttons, each with a distinct function. Press the first button 100 times to earn a point redeemable for cash. The second button 10 times to deduct a point from your opponent. And the third button 10 times to safeguard your own points from being stolen. The participant is then informed that they were randomly assigned to a group that did not keep the points taken from the opponent. Points will still be taken from the opponent, but there is no money in there for the participant. Seems pretty straightforward, right? However, as with any psychological experiment, there is a twist. First off, there is no human opponent. You are actually playing against a simple algorithm. Second of all, your random assignment to the group that is not taking stolen points is, well, as Goofy, the beloved Disney character would say, utter <laughs> lie on a stick. The monetary motivation was removed to keep that stealing option as a purely aggressive one. And aggressive you can get, since the algorithm will take one of your well-earned points every 6 to 60 seconds. The intensity and frequency of your retaliation, so stealing the points after having yours taken, provide a measure of your aggression in response to provocation. And how does tear sniffing affect that behavior? It reduces the retaliation, so aggression tendencies, quite significantly, by almost 44%. As the authors mentioned, Charles Darwin was particularly puzzled by the behavior of human emotional tearing, and for lack of apparent function beyond ocular maintenance, he concluded that whipping is a, an accidental result. Well, here is the reason, Charles. Emotional crying is not only a social clue. Tears are here to water down aggressive tendencies. I want to mention one more important part of the study. Participants couldn't tell the difference between tears and saline, showcasing the odorless quality of the stimuli. And it looks like this subconscious part of odor processing could be the crucial part of how effective it can be. The next study showed quite clearly the difference between the conscious and unconscious scent processing, providing a statistically significant reason for some people to ease on the cologne. 
we are a social species, so our brain is quite good at evaluating others by looking only at their faces. You can learn more about that in my video about how AI created better faces than humans. But this skill of our brain is quite automated, meaning that it could be affected by unconscious processes. Our next publication wanted to not only check how different smells can change the perception of faces, but if this influence can change when we are aware of those environmental odors. First, three different stimuli were picked for sniffing. Lemon, as a pleasant aroma, neutral anisole, with a similar smell to anise seed, and negative valeric acid, characterized as sweat. Participants who disapproved with that categorizations of smell were kicked out of the study, so the playing field was leveled when it comes to smell preferences. Additional playing field smoothing was done to the photos of the faces, so that only the most emotionally neutral ones were selected to the, for the participants' evaluation. Researchers also checked each participants for their smell detection threshold, so that the stimuli dilution can ride this sweet edge of subconscious processing. Finally, it was time for some experimental sniffing. Participants had to smell a container with one of the randomly assigned smells, the positive, neutral, negative or odorless. Following the sniff test, participants were immediately shown a facial image for a brief moment and then asked to rate its likability. After multiple rounds like that, researchers crunched the numbers, unveiling the unmatched power of stinky sweat. Quoting the study, faces were rated less likable following the unpleasant odor than following the pleasant odor. You can clearly see that on the chart, but what is important, this change was only visible in the group that did not detect any smell in the container. This less likable evaluation was driven by an unconscious process. By comparison, this chart for people who recognize the smell tells a very different story. As the authors say, the behavioral effects of social preference emerged only when other information was minor enough to prevent top-down regulation. In other words, the smell pulls the strings, but as soon as it is recognized, conscious control kicks in, trying to negate the smell influence. It looks like, when preparing to a party, it makes more sense to tune down on the perfumes. This way, you can try to get the unconscious to process the smell, instead of going for an axe spray punch in the gut situation. Although this experiment reveals how various odors impact our perception of others, it merely scratches the surface. When odors remain just below our detection threshold, they possess the subtle power to influence even more complex behaviors. Our next study should have its own section just because of the banger title, Smells Like Clean Spirit. And less bangery, but still interesting subtitle of non-conscious effects of scent on cognition and behavior. I have found the description of this experiment in the biology book by Martin Lindstrom, and I believe it was this book highlight. Please enjoy it with me again. In a 2005 study, two researchers placed a barely discernible lemon-scented cleaning liquid in a bucket of warm water concealed behind a wall. Half the volunteers unknowingly took their seats in the scented room. The other half plopped themselves down in an unscented room. Then, the participants were asked to write down what they planned to do that day. 36% of the participants in the scented room listed an activity that related to cleaning, compared to only 11% of the people in the unscented room. A light scent of citrus all-purpose cleaner creeping below the detection threshold enhanced the mental accessibility of cleaning behavior. What's more, hidden cameras observed that those who had been seated in the scented room made less of a mess. Merely smelling the cleanser made the people in the scented room fastidious in their eating. The unconsciously enhanced concept of cleaning not only changed how people planned their day, but how they behaved. The undetectable scent activated relevant behavioral scripts. 
Maybe all it needs for the feisty teenagers of the world to finally clean their rooms is a diluted citrus cleaner and a mop nearby. Hmm? But the power of scent extends beyond just influencing our daily behaviors and routines. Sure, smell can make us less aggressive, like other people more, or finally clean up the basement, but odors are activating our brains quite heavily, and this neural stimulation on its own seems to be quite beneficial. Living in an environment rich with novel stimuli, engaging various senses typically yields positive results, at least for rodents, that seems to react with higher neuroplasticity when exposed to a diverse living space. Interestingly, the sense of smell and new strong olfactory experiences stand out as a potential trigger for this enhanced brain flexibility. On the other hand, loss of smell can trigger this brain demise. Two researchers from California hypothesized that olfactory loss makes the brain vulnerable to exposing the symptoms of neurological disorders, like depression, and daily olfactory enrichment could be an effective treatment. Another team of researchers delved into the issue of cognitive decline with a study published in 2022. They investigated the effect of an intensive olfactory training in patients with dementia. Participants' nostrils were quite busy. The training session required a sniff of 40 different odors, twice a day for 15 days. Quite a regiment, but it was so worth it. Beside a newly gained muscular nose, the intensive olfactory training group showed significant improvements in depression, attention, memory and language function. Bear in mind, though, that this treatment was meant to help patients with cognitive decline. It is hard to expect people with dementia to go through all those exercises on their own. Imagine a pill box with tablets for each day, but instead of a pocket box you have a small suitcase with 40 bottles. It gets annoying very fast, even if you don't have memory issues. That's why a follow-up study used a great trick. While visual environmental enrichment only works with your eyes opened, for olfactory enrichment you just need to breathe. And you don't even need to process this olfactory enrichment consciously. This means that you can do the intensive olfactory training basically in your sleep. Researchers from University of California first recruited a diverse set of 43 older adults with no diagnosis of cognitive impairment or dementia. Following an initial series of neuropsychological assessments, each participant was equipped with an odorant diffuser and seven glass cartridges. Instructions were to insert a cartridge into the diffuser and activate it at bedtime, ensuring a different scent for each night of the week. The diffuser, when turned on, released the odorant into the air during the night for two hours. And here comes the experimental twist. Some participants received cartridges with essential oils from rose, orange, eucalyptus, lemon, peppermint, rosemary and lavender. The other group got distilled water with a trace amount of the aroma. After six months of this nightly olfactory extravaganza, all participants came back to be cognitively tested again. And folks, the control group with distilled water was eating essential oil group dust. We observed a clear, statistically significant 226% difference between enriched and control older adults in performance on the Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test. This test evaluates verbal learning and memory. That's a great improvement over just six months. Other published studies are also solidifying our understanding of the positive impact of olfactory training. A systematic review from 2023 describing 18 articles pointed out that olfactory training is associated with improved global cognition and, in particular, verbal fluency and verbal learning slash memory. The sleep study not only confirmed some of those results, but showed that this potential neuroplasticity boost could be effortlessly achieved at home. When we sleep, it is hard to do any sort of training easier than that. The only slightly annoying part is that the study was supported by Procter & Gamble, and that a product based on this research is in the making. I can hear the eyebrows rising, but to be honest, the experiment was done with equipment that you can buy 
uh, from any diffuser and essential oil shop. The more annoying part is that essential oils tend to be toxic to cats. I guess to keep my fluffy overlords happy, I will just proceed with my dementia. So try to keep an eye on the surrounding aromas. By keeping a conscious check on them, you ensure that they don't lead you astray. And when you want to use the power of smell, do it to boost your memory by enriching your olfactory experience. If you want, share this video with a friend who still owes you some money or is holding your book for two years straight. It could be a nice intro to the intense olfactory memory training they need and, possibly, a nice reminder. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. I'm on the quest to hit 100 subscribers by 2030, because, as I like to say, you can achieve anything if the bar is sufficiently low. See you in the next one. Bye!